Hey everybody, thank you for clicking on this video. I appreciate your support. If you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so. It would help my channel out a lot. So for those that are new, what I do is I take a project from an old electronics magazine and I bring it to life. <clears throat> so I get the components, I, I make the PC board, put the components on the PC board, put the switches, knobs, everything, and I put it into a case and then I test it afterwards. So I have three projects on the go right now that are so close to being done, but they're not. So what I have to do for this week is to pull out an old project that I already made in the past. And that's what I'm doing today. And today we're going to look at this curve tracer. So this came from Mr. Carlson, uh, Mr. Carlson's lab. Uh, great YouTube channel. If you haven't already been there, check him out. The guy's a genius. And he built his own circuits, and this is one of them. Now, I can't get it. I can't show you the schematic because it's proprietary. Now, if you want to become a Patreon member from for Mr. Carlson, go ahead. You could do that. I'm a member. Anyway, so this curve tracer, what it's going to do is it's going to give us or show us on an oscilloscope using the XY terminals, connections, um, signature traces of components like capacitors, diodes, xenodiodes, etc. And we can get an idea of what they look like uh, just by looking on the scope. Now, obviously, we're not going to get uh, critical um, measurements, uh, but we're going to be close enough. And in fact, this uh, device does allow us to connect a, a voltmeter. And we can actually look at some of the, um, uh, let's say, the um, reverse bias on a Zener diode. We should probably get a close enough reading on that meter. Anyway, uh, that's what I'm going to show you today. So I'll just quickly show you the inside here. Uh, that's the, uh, the that's the power supply. So I built that power supply, and it's 15 volts, I believe, top to bottom, and maybe 12. I can't remember. And um, then the, this is the actual circuit board from Mr. Carlson. So he designed the board. Uh, I got the, uh, the traces from it, and I, I made the board and put the components on, etc. Uh, we have a Ween oscillator here and a whole bunch of op amps, and we have the device under test terminal. So that's where we're going to connect the components. So... That's what we're looking at today is a curve tracer. So let's uh, just get at it and to it, to it and at it. And we'll put a couple of components on the curve tracer. So stand by and we'll take a look. Okay, so what we're going to do first is a simple diode. So I've got a diode there. It's a 1N4007. And that, of course, are, goes to these leads here underneath, the red and black one. And <clears throat> we've got a voltmeter connected. Uh, to these two banana plugs here. And we've got it on low right now, and this is going to adjust the voltage. So we'll, we'll, I'll turn that in a bit. And we've got our X and Y going to our X and Y on our scope. <clears throat> so that's the setup. Right now, nothing is flowing through the diode. But let's start to increase the voltage and now we can see a curve. And in fact, you know what? Let me just reduce the intensity. Okay, that's better. Okay, so here I am. I'm increasing the voltage. And now we can start to see the diode conduct right at that knee, if you want to call it that. What I'll do is I'll just bring you to the meter here. And... I'm looking at the scope and I'm seeing that knee and it's about, uh, it's about right. So that's the actual, um, conduction. Yeah. So then I got a bit of a glare. So that's when the dot starts to conduct, right? At about 0 0.6, 0 0.7. And you can see it there on the scope. It's conducting at that point. And as we increase the voltage, we'll notice that there is a little bit of, uh, capacitance now right at the knee and that's what that opening is and you'll see later on when I test a capacitor <clears throat> we'll get uh, it should show as a circle right and that's what we're seeing we're seeing a little bit of capacitance now it's not 
important, I don't think, for most circuits, especially that diode is usually used in power supplies, so not critical. Um, but that's what a curve tracer shows uh, a diode. That's how it shows as a diode. Uh, pretty neat. Okay, so let's, uh, let's connect a, a Zener diode up. So let me uh, get that set up, and I'll bring you right back in. Okay, so I've got a 5.1 volt Zener diode connected to our curve tracer. So let's take a look at the scope. And we're at zero. Sorry for all the shaking. And I'm just increasing the voltage. Okay, there you can see the forward bias. And I'm slowly increasing it. Oh, and there you can see the reverse bias right there. So the fact that we've got a reverse bias and a forward bias, that tells us this diode is a Zener diode. Now, let's say we didn't know. Well, that's a perfect example of why we could use a curve tracer, right? Just to check the characteristics. And, and we do have some capacitance in here too, as you can see, but uh, again, not critical. Zeners are usually used in power supplies, but um, gives us a little bit more information. And our meter is reading... 5.17, so close enough. So that's a Zener diode and how, what it looks like on a curve tracer. So let's go to the next component, which will be a resistor. Let's take a look at a resistor. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to test uh, a resistor, right? And we'll see what the characteristics of a resistor are. And I guess, the mo by the way, I'm trying to improve my production values here. So I have uh, my camera or my phone on a tripod. So I'm hoping this works out. This is the first time I've used it. So bear with me. Uh, but because it's on a tripod, I can't really take it off and then show you the connections on the curve tracer, etc. But we already know what they are, right? And we don't need to look at the voltmeter for resistance. So we're okay. So let me just show you the basics of a resistor. So right now, the device under test leads are open. So it's a wide open, infinite resistance, and clearly you could see we've got a flat line. So when I actually tie the two together or uh, connect the two together, we have a vertical line. So that's zero ohms, right? So that's zero ohms and infinity. So obviously what we're going to do is we're going to get some different characteristics depending on the resistance. So I've got three resistors. The first one is a 220 ohm resistor. So I'm going to connect that to the to the leads. And there we go. Now you can see a little bit counter or clockwise movement on the line. It's not straight anymore. So let me take that off and I'll put a higher resistance on. And this is a 1.8K. I got a connection. Ah. Okay, there you can see it. So now we've got more, uh, a, a greater angle. It's more clockwise. So let me put a higher resistance on. And this one is a 560K. And there you can see it. it's practically flat. So you get the idea with resistance. It's a count or a clockwise rotation of a vertical line uh, if there was a short. So that's how you can measure a resistance. Now, obviously, it's not anything compared to what we could do with a multimeter. For example, we're not going to get the actual value of the resistor, but we're getting the characteristic curve. So who knows? Maybe back in the olden days, back in the 1920s and 30s, I think when they had these curve tracer designs out there, that might have been a great way of testing a resistor. And perhaps if you had a bad resistor that was noisy, maybe you could probably see that on the curve tracer. Um, but anyway, that's a curve, or that's the resistor on a curve tracer. So let's move on to something different. Let's go to a capacitor. So I'll bring you right back in. Okay, so let's test some capacitors now. So I've got two capacitors, equivalent capacitors. So I don't know, obviously my production, video production skills are nowhere near what they should be. That is a bad capacitor on the left. So it's an old wax capacitor. It's a 0 0.005 microfarad. And the one on the right is, is a brand new one. Now it's a 0 0.0047, but close enough. So let's compare those two. 
So maybe what we'll do is we'll start off with the, the brand new capacitor, the one that should be good, right? And looking at the scope, that's exactly what a capacitor should look like. It should be a circular or circular shaped. Nothing wrong there. Now let's connect, it, uh, connect the bad capacitor. And there we go. Okay, so first of all, we've got a more oval shape uh, to the capacitor. So that's not a good sign. But you can also see that it's tilted to the right. So the top part is actually turned to the right a little bit, kind of clockwise direction. It's not centered on the, uh, the y-axis. And that's indicating that there is some resistance actually on this capacitor. So there is some resistance through it. And... Um, we do have capacitance, but it's it's not a good capacitor. In fact, I checked it on my Mr. Carlson's capacitor checker, and it won't pass. But that's a very, very um, intense test. But clearly, you can see we've got a problem. So that's the, I guess, comparison between a good capacitor and a bad capacitor using a curve tracer. So let's look at something else next. Now, not too sure what, but let's take a look at something else next. Okay, so what I wanted to show you is uh, a switch, right? What do switches look like? Well, we, we know from a resistance it should be, um, when it's shorted out vertical, and when it's open, it should be horizontal. But what about if there's an in-between? Kind of like what I've got here. Let me show you the switch here. It's connected to the device under test leads. Let me uh, just, so right now it's open, so let me just slide it over to the closed position and you can kind of see that it's on an angle right there's a bit of resistance there and not only that now I'm trying to keep it uh, as steady as I can and I uh, and you can see some shifting going on it's almost like there's some resistance and that's not a good thing now it could just be a dirty switch but here's a perfect example of what the uh, the curve tracer can do for you it can show you a bad switch now let me so i found this bad switch i've got another one and let me put that on okay and this one is a toggle switch I'll show you here in a second. Okay, so there's the toggle switch that I'm testing right now. So I just flicked it, and I know I'm not... There we go. Okay, so I just flicked it the other way. And I flicked it again the other way. You can clearly see it's not making contact. It should go straight. So when it's making contact, it'll go vertical, right? That's equals to zero resistance. So let me try again. Oh, you can see it a little bit there. Now I'm kind of moving the potter, or sorry, the switch around, and I'm not getting any contact to go this way. Okay, so this way when I go left and right, and even not, I actually have to push the switch to the center position a little bit but clear and now it's it's up i go to the other way it's down up but it's flaky you can clearly see this is a bad switch so another example of what you could do with a curve tracer and switches and then just for reference let me show you what a good one looks like so again this is just a big toggle switch And you can clearly see that it's making contact with no issues whatsoever. So there you go. That's another example uh, for a curve tracer is to test some switches out. Okay, so I think that concludes it. But let me just um, take the camera off the tri tripod and uh, button up this video. Okay, so that's uh, about it. So I've just buttoned up the actual curve tracer. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I know there's lots of other curve tracers out there, designs, but this one is from Mr. Carlson's lab. So if you want to become a member of his Patreon page, go visit him and sign up. And then you'll get this schematic, plus you'll get a million other types of circuit studies designed. 
So that's about it. So thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Take care, be safe, and we'll catch you on the next video. And by the way, I like I said, I've got three projects and you're really going to like them. They're, they're, they're very detailed projects. Again, I'm just waiting for a part in one and I'm having troubles on two of them, but I will figure it out and I'll get those posted. Take care. Bye for now.